Hello and welcome to today's episode which is about media review of performing arts and cinema. The content for this episode has been researched by Sunil Sixena who is an author and journalist with over three decades of experience in print, new media, social media, media education and media research. The media reviews a wide range of artistic activities. These include reviews of plays, concerts, recitals, musical recordings, films, books and art exhibitions. The readers of newspapers and magazines look forward to these reviews. They are both a source of information and understanding of issues related to art and theatre. In this episode, you will learn why media reviews are important, how a reviewer prepares himself before the event and what are the points that he looks for. It is important here to understand that not everyone can be a reviewer. A good media reviewer is expected to have domain expertise. Otherwise, his reviews will not command respect. You will be told about four kinds of media reviews in this episode. These are theater review, dance review, music review, and film review. All these four forms of reviews are of performing arts and form an important part of media content. But first, we need to understand why media publishes or broadcasts reviews. Why are reviews important? What is the purpose that they serve? The media reviews are undertaken for three main reasons. The first is to assist readers decide whether or not they should watch a play, a film or a concert. The newspaper and magazine readers want to know how good a newly released film is. They want to know if the performances in a play being staged in their city are of high quality or not. They wonder if it is worth going to an art gallery to browse the latest painting exhibition. The media reviews give them these insights. The second is to provide informed and critical opinion about the literary value of a new book, about performances of actors in a film, or about the quality of direction in a play. These become useful benchmarks in rating the abilities or skills of performers. There are times when the artists dislike the views of the reviewer or art critic, but the reviews help them reflect on their work and give them a reason or opportunity to improve upon their skills. The third is to record the artistic expressions of each age or era. Each review is like an essay that future historians can study to understand and assess the evolution of art. The reviewers who are also known as art critics are domain specialists. They are very knowledgeable about their respective fields, having either worked in that field or having acquired knowledge about a particular field over several years. For instance, a person who reviews dance performances is well versed about the finer points of dance. The same applies to film or theatre reviewers. The art critics need not be regular staffers, though newspapers encourage staff members to acquire the necessary knowledge to write reviews. Mostly, art critics are individuals who are passionate about art and culture. They may be ex-dancers or ex-theatre artists 
but who have a good understanding about their respective fields. Such individuals are commissioned by newspapers to write reviews. The newspapers carefully monitor the reviews to ensure that the reviews are fair and are respected both by the common readers as well as the performing artists. It is important that the review should be published early, ideally after the first performance of the play or the first screening of the film. This gives the readers time to decide whether or not they should go to watch the play or film. In the case of books or recorded songs, the review should be done before the book or the CD hits the stands. The reviewer should go well prepared for a performance. This does not mean that the reviewer should have an opinion on the play based on the cast or the director. Instead, it means that the reviewer should go with an open mind. He should ensure that he has a copy of the program and has a good seat. The reviewer should take notes as he watches the performance or walks around an art show. He should also track audience reaction. The audience behavior is a good way to gauge the reception of a film or play. Too many catcalls or jeers or boos means that the film or play suffers from inadequacies. In contrast, spontaneous applause, frequent bursts of laughter, or tenseness in the hall reflect audience interest. It is for the reviewer to translate these emotions into words for his readers. It is important that the reviewer is fair and honest. He should not gloss over a poor performance or run down a cameo act just because he does not like the performer. The audience that has watched the play will immediately realize that the reviewer is biased. It will destroy the credibility of the reviewer and also lower the esteem of the publication. When reviewing amateur performances, the reviewer can afford to be a little charitable. After all, the performers are staging the play because of their love for theater. The reviewer should therefore avoid making disparaging comments about individual performers. Instead, he should comment on the technical aspects or script of the play. The skill lies in providing an honest perspective without ridiculing the performers. An important point to keep in mind is that a review is not a news report. It is a critique, comment on a performance and has no rigid structure. Your first step should be to organize your thoughts in a logical structure. The best way to do so is to go over the notes that you made during the performance. You now need to categorize them under the following heads. Script, acting, costumes, lighting, sound, direction, audience reaction. Jot down your notes as well your thoughts and impressions under each head. These points can now be woven into a compelling review. Like any piece of writing, the intro is the most important. It is a hook that draws the reader into the review. Don't start with the obvious that a play was staged last evening in Rabindra Bhavan. Instead, start with something that was dramatic, something that touched you or moved you. The chances are that it will also arrest reader attention. Next comes the description. Don't tell the entire story. That kills the review because no one would want to watch a play 
whose story he knows. Instead, summarize the plot and the message that the play communicates. Is the play against child feticide? Does the play symbolize the horrors of dowry? Is the storyline the traditional rich poor conflict? Or is there a new refreshing angle or thought that the play promotes? Your review must provide answers to these questions without giving the story away. Describe the costumes, lighting and sound. The costumes are especially important if it happens to be a period play. The technical effects, that is how the lights and sound have been handled, are also important. Much of the impact of a play is dependent upon technical effects. Your review must provide insights into this important aspect of the play, especially if the play has been enacted by professionals. Finally, your skills as a reviewer lie in analyzing direction. The success of any play depends upon how the director handles the cast or paces the play. A play may have all the pluses, such as great actors, strong storyline, and powerful sound and light effects, but it will not make an impact if the direction is weak. Professional reviewers spend considerable time studying the directorial skills of great directors. Each director has its own style of working and leaves his distinct mark on the play. As a reviewer, you should be able to judge what is unique about the play. You should then state it clearly in your review. A musical performance needs a different kind of reviewer expertise. The reviewer should have a passion for music and should be familiar with the major genres. It is equally important to be well prepared before a live concert. This would mean listening to the past albums of the artist so that appropriate comparisons can be made. In case of recorded albums or CDs, the reviewer has more time. He can run the soundtrack again and again. Also, he need not comment on all songs in an album. He can select the ones that he considers are likely to interest a large number of listeners. In the case of dance too, the reviewer needs to have basic knowledge of the dance form and should be able to make intelligent comments about the performance. This is not always easy because there are plenty of dance forms and each form has its own language and expressions. An important point to keep in mind about music and dance reviews is not to delve too deep into technical expressions while describing a performance. What the reviewer needs to do is explain the nuances and finer points without peppering his copy with technical terms. The reviewer must remember that he's writing for the common man, not for the music teacher. Also, the reviewer need not slip into the first person. He should avoid starting his sentences with I because readers hate to be talked down. A good film review should include the following points. It should inform the readers as to who is in the film and when the film will be released. The readers are especially interested in the actors because each reader has their favorite actors and actresses. Many readers watch all the films of their favorite actors. The knowledgeable readers also want to know the name of the director. The overview should also give the genre of the film. It should tell the readers if the film is a war film, a comedy, a melodrama, or a musical. Is the film a documentary or an art film? 
The reader also wants to know if the film is a family film or an adult film. If the review is about a children's film, then the review must mention if it is animation film. Like the theater review, the film review should also describe the story and some of the action. However, the review should not reveal too much. The review will do a disservice if it reveals the surprise ending or the twists and turns in the film that the director throws to sustain viewer interest. The readers should be allowed to go to the cinema hall and learn the surprises on their own. This is where the reviewer's knowledge makes a difference. A good film reviewer should be well versed in the art and craft of filmmaking. He should be able to comment with authority on technical points. There are six subjects that technically sound film reviews should cover. It is important that the reviewer should tell the readers as to how he rates the performance of the actors. Is it substandard? Is it average? Is it outstanding? Is there something new that the actors have done? If yes, what is it? How is the acting of the players different to their acting in other films? The success of any film is dependent on the skills of the director. The director not only dictates the pace of the film, but also plays a key role in deciding sets, camera angles, lighting, sound, costumes, etc. He makes the actors feel comfortable on the sets and assists them in raising their levels of performance. The reviewer should examine the technical attributes of the film closely and share his opinion with the readers. He should also compare these with the past films directed by the same director to give the readers an idea of the evolution of the director as a filmmaker. These insights have great value for the average film goer. They will help him make a decision whether he should see the film or not. Is the editing smooth or jerky? Do the different shots dovetail into each other? Is there a feeling of continuity or the story lurches from scene to scene? These are points that the reviewer should observe and then give his opinion. The visual appeal and impact of a film depends on the way the moving images have been captured. The reviewer needs to spend considerable time on analyzing the work of the cinematographer who is considered the most important man after the director in the making of a film. It is he who sets the mood through close-ups, long shots and interesting camera angles. The reviewer must analyze the camera angles used in the film. Everyone knows the magical power of the soundtrack. It can transport you into another world. That is why film directors 
pay great attention to the musical score and soundtrack in films. The reviewer too needs to state whether the soundtrack gelled with the scenes or was it jarring. In India, the musical scores are even more important. It is unthinkable to have a Hindi film without songs. The reviewer must therefore analyze how good is the music and sound effects in the film. These are getting more and more important with the improvement in technology and the use in storytelling. Earlier, it was films made in Hollywood that mesmerized the world with the use of computer-generated imagery. Today, Indian filmmakers too are turning to technology to create spellbinding imagery. The film review must discuss the special effects used in the film. The reviewer must remember that his technical analysis will go a long way in influencing the reader and building interest in his reviews. Readers will not pay much attention to his reviews if the technical analysis is shallow or misleading. This is why the best film reviewers are those who are familiar with the craft of filmmaking. They have either dabbled in films themselves or have undertaken a course in film reviewing. The last and most important element of the media review is the advice that the reviewer gives. This is normally done by rating the film on a scale of 1 to 5. Some reviewers assign stars to a film. An outstanding film is assigned 5 stars, while a poor film is given 1 star. The rating then becomes a useful yardstick for the reader to decide whether or not he should watch the film. There are three reasons why the media publishes or broadcasts reviews. The first is to advise the readers about the quality of a play, film or musical concert. The readers can then make an informed decision whether or not to watch a film, buy a book, visit an art exhibition or watch a musical concert. The second is to critique the performance of theatre artists or actors, the technical effects used in a play or film, the quality of direction, cinematography, etc. These are valuable insights for performing artists, writers, actors, singers, etc. The third is to record art as it happens for the future historians. The media reviews are written by individuals who are well informed about their respective fields. They can be newspaper reporters and editors who over the years have developed a good understanding of their subject. They could also be individuals who are passionate about art and culture and are commissioned by newspapers to review dance, drama, art exhibitions, musical concerts, films, books, etc. The credibility of a review depends on its objectivity. The reviewers are warned not to let their personal likes and dislikes creep into the reviews. They are also expected not to run down performers, especially if they happen to be amateurs. There is no fixed structure of media reviews. The reviewer decides which points need to be emphasized. These points, in the case of theatre reviews, include a critique of script, acting, costumes, lighting, sound, direction and audience reaction. In the case of film reviews, the media reviewer is expected to comment upon storyline, acting and technical effects such as lighting, 
sound, camera angles, editing, sound effects, and special effects. The reviewer should also rate the film because this helps the reader decide whether or not he should watch the film. An important indication about the success or failure of a performance is audience reaction. The reviewer should always observe how the audience reacts to a play, film or musical performance. However, the reviewer should never tell the full story because that kills reader interest in the play or film. The review should ideally be done soon after the release of the film or the first performance of a play. In the case of books, the review can be done before its launch. The same is true of music reviews, especially recorded music. The language of the review should be simple and easy to understand. The reviewer must remember that his reader is the common man and not the art teacher. This is all that we have in today's episode. We hope that it helped you understand what is a media review, what is its purpose, and how it is done. Thank you and see you soon with another informative episode. Goodbye.